Next, beef. As more of us like to know where our food comes from, one supermarket is really putting its neck on the chopping block when it comes to the origins of its beef. I've come to M&S to find out more. We can trace all our beef right back to every farm and animal. That's quite some statement. So how can they be so sure? I totally get how you can trace a whole steak, because it's come from a single cut of meat. But when you take various cuts of meat and mix them together, how can you say you can fully trace that? So I'm setting Head of Agriculture Steve McLean the ultimate challenge. Would you be able to tell me exactly which farm and animals these burgers are made from? Uh, yes, we would. We send it to the lab and we'll analyse it for you and then show you the farms it comes from. Right, let's go. And also, can I use your staff discount to get this lot? You can. <laughs> Maybe. So this supermarket is making a big deal about the movements of its beef. But why has food traceability become so important to us consumers? I'm heading over to Northern Ireland to see some scientists who use cutting-edge technology to reveal the truth about what we are eating. Right, that's where we're heading. Hi there, you must be Chris. I'm Jim. Jim, good to meet you. Professor Chris Elliott headed up the government's review into the horsemeat scandal of 2013. Criminal networks had been able to penetrate the UK meat supply industry. We all trusted those big retailers to be checking their supply chains. Reputationally, a lot of those big supermarkets were damaged. And what they said was, this can never happen to us again. And do you think, was that just a one-off? What's really happening now is it's becoming more and more complicated, our world food supply system. That creates massive opportunities for cheating. So this institute is about uncovering food crimes. So how do you do that? I will show you what we affectionately call Star Trek. When it comes to revealing the truth about what we are eating, this team are boldly going where no one's gone before. So what we have is a laser, which we can use to burn any type of food stuff. We look at the entire molecular signature of the smoke, and within about five seconds, that will tell us, is it genuine beef or has it been tampered with in some way? You're going to be able to tell the difference between, say, horse meat and beef purely by looking at the smoke. Wow. So it's cutting through. You can see the smoke coming out now, can't you? smoke coming. And now we are analysing the data. Oh, look. So it's it started flashing hearts. It's saying some part of the smoke is beef, some is heart. So this has failed the test. It is not genuine 100% beef. This piece of kit is blowing me away. So having all this cutting-edge technology, it just adds more weapons to your arsenal against the food criminals out there. I think that's a very good way to put it. One supermarket is using similar methods to make a big claim about the origins of all their beef. So we said, prove it. They've sent their burgers to their food testing lab. Now, which cow went into what burger? Now, you've got our burgers. Yes. Ronan Loftus from the lab is ready for a grilling. How many different farms have contributed to those burgers? We found uh, 27 farms from Scotland and Northern England. Wow, that, that is incredible. So I've got my little burger here. Yeah. So if you call out the first farm, I will be able to mark it on the map. Sure. Uh, the first farm uh, we identified was West Linton in Lothian. OK. What about the breed of cow, then, from this farm? This was an Angus cross. Uh, it, it was uh, 23 months old. What about its name? That's UK 0105074001151. Wow. Who's up next? Penrith, Greenlaw in Berwickshire. Clackmannan in Clackmannanshire. We're testing your geography here, Jimmy. I feel like a weatherman. Look at that. I mean, walking through the store, and you see all the signs saying, we can trace every animal back to the farm, individual animal. You read it and go, really? But here we are. You've, you've proved the point. Scientifically guaranteed, Jimmy. The lab results seem conclusive. But how can they be certain exactly which cows have contributed to my burger? So along with supermarket Steve, we're off to a farm just outside Glasgow to meet farmer David Henry. The traceability, where does that journey begin? Each of these animals is given an official yellow tag. Passport then travels with the animal to the abattoir. I know all about yellow tags, but they're taking it to the next level of genetic identification and are actually using the cow's DNA. So it's a bit like CSI cow, is it? Could well be. 
So what I'm interested in is where you take the DNA sample. Are you going to take it from the hair or you're going to take a blood sample? You can take DNA from a number of different places, but the key thing is it isn't done on farm here. It's done in our abattoirs. Let's see it. Thanks very much. Thank see you, you later. You Bye. later. <laughs> Abattoir manager Gerard McCafferty takes delivery of over 300 cattle a day and has to keep track of each individual carcass. So this is where the DNA is taken? Yes. Right, so how do you do that? Take some protein off the brisket. So that's the DNA? That's the DNA sample, yeah. OK, so what's he doing here? He's scanning his DNA sample. That then goes away to be frozen. That is how we bank the DNA sample. These tiny swabs are at the heart of the traceability process. Once the DNA sample is frozen and banked, there's a permanent record of where each piece of beefsteak or mint came from. This is like a genetic profile for each and every cow. A lot of effort for a burger. There we go. Finished product. Finished product. Where's it going to go now? It's going to go into the trees and off to the supermarkets. Right, and then this will be bought by the public and then it's full traced all the full way back to the farm. Full park. traced to right way back to the farm. As we consumers become increasingly aware of where our food comes from, this technology may reassure us, and it could become common practice in the future with other food producers too.